<laughs> intuitive voice that came through me and said, wait, entrepreneurship is just like life. And it's like school. You're always learning. There's no end to your learning and growth. And experience and skills are so valuable. And you're always gaining new experience and skills. <laughs> Maybe a lot of those experiences and skills that we never learned in traditional school. So that's how that came about. And also the other piece is about how entrepreneurship, it's not an, in like business, it's not an area that we can just isolate because we are human beings first and we care about all the other areas of our lives to be able to be fulfilled and truly purpose-driven. We should care about our health. We should care about relationships. We should care about um, what other area is there that people focus on, our spiritual health, our physical health, right? So I have more of this holistic view to life. And I find that business and life, especially when you're working on purpose and it's your mission, it's your calling, you can't tell anymore which is which. <laughs> Welcome to Empower Her Money Podcast. I am your host, Angela Duncan, speaker, best-selling author, serial entrepreneur, and we talk all things money and business. Today's episode is sponsored by freemoneytipsbook.com, freemoneytipsbook.com. Head over there, download your free ebook, Seven Unshakable Tips to Get You Started on Your Financial Journey. Today's episode, I get to I interview Ilona Pari, and she is with the Life School. She is the CEO and founder. In today's episode, she's going to talk about two mistakes you are making as a business owner when it comes to your cash flow and a scalability of your business. Hi, Ilona. Welcome to Empower Her Money Podcast. How are you today? I'm doing awesome, Angela. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, thank you for saying yes and joining me today. I would love for you to start off kind of sharing your story and kind of your journey on how you got to doing what you do um, today. Yeah, I think uh, I'll start from uh, pretty much, um, I guess, being instilled with the American dream as we moved here when I was only 15, my family from Albania. You know, beginning struggles, I was the oldest child. I grew up really fast. I had to start working right away and translating because my parents didn't speak the language. So it was hard for them to kind of get those first beginning jobs. You know, we struggled. We moved a lot, all of that. So that's kind of shaped a lot of the my character, you know, instilled new limiting beliefs, but also, so new, you know, helped me see new opportunities later on in my journey. And then I started to climb the corporate ladder. That was what my family kind of wanted for me it's like okay get a good career and then get a good job and that's the American dream which is why we came here so that's what I did 15 years for Fortune 500 Corporation it happened to be in a growth mode or growth phase as the company was growing and I was just in the right place the right the right time for many years so I was blessed to be able to do different positions such as marketing sales HR my latest position was executive leader and um, until everything always somehow ends right and they're the end of that stage and phase uh, was there for me as the company was acquired by another company and the culture turned very profit driven so I was no longer aligned I no longer saw a future I was seen like an, as a number so I said okay what else can I do that's where my personal development journey started because I needed to know what I wanted to do when I grew up next <laughs> so that's where entrepreneurship showed up for me I felt like I didn't want to do another nine to five. And I said, intuitively, my inner voice and all of these things that happen once you start to become aware, you know, and you start looking for answers and a new direction in life, uh, where I said, okay, I'm going to build my own purpose driven company, a company that is where I can utilize my skills, experience and expertise to help others, uh, but also be able to align the profit piece, which I've seen how that shouldn't be primary, but it should be almost like a byproduct to the, the work that we do. So that is what I did. I started with an executive coaching, then I moved to career coaching because um, I still wanted to help people in the big wide world. I didn't want to just stay in the corporate sphere. And then for the last couple of years, I've been positioned based on my gifts, knowledge and expertise of what I've discovered. And now I help other purpose-driven entrepreneurs like myself and CEOs that are working for more conscious corporations, build a legacy company through branding, marketing, sales systems and team. 
So that is awesome. a little bit how I got here today. I hope it wasn't I hope it wasn't too long. No, not at all. Now you just touched on your gifts. Being that you were in corporate world for quite a long time of your career, um, maybe give one or two things that you learned that you teach other people now, and perhaps one or maybe one or two things that you learned that you teach people not to do from what you learned in the corporate world. Yes, uh, it's the systems piece and the processes piece that I learned from working for a corporation, because obviously the bigger the company, the more you need to rely on systems and team to be able to hold it together and everybody works their, you know, the right priorities and the right policy procedures that are lining all to the vision of the mission of the company. So it's processes, operations. And also productivity, time efficiency, if a process can be cut shorter to save us time and money and utilize the resources in the right angle that is going to align our purpose with profit. That's another big thing that I've learned there. And the discipline of the execution or the implementation, then no mm -hmm. matter what, you got to get it done. And the project project management skills. As well. Awesome. Um, you're also a best-selling author. Um, so congratulations on that. Talk a little bit about your journey and maybe how each book came about to you so that you could produce a book that you felt was, you know, great content for your audience. Yeah. My first experience uh, with books was when I um, aligned with um, uh, contributing, uh, becoming a contributing author for another community. And I wrote my first chapter. It was pretty much my journey. It was like a memoir of my personal life and what I had learned. That was what that first chapter was about. And then there was something about the process of just sitting down and writing that gave me a lot of clarity, you know, around my work, around kind of where I needed to focus at that time. So I fell in love with the process and then I started, I read, I wrote my first book through speaking it and then transcribing it because I was more, more comfortable with the speaking piece than the writing aspect of actually writing a book. So that's how my first book came about, Connecting the Dots Backwards. I put a little bit of a memoir of my experience, but also a lot of different topics to help people discover their life's purpose and their vision personally and professionally. So that was my first one. And then it just continued. I love the process. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm putting together my knowledge and expertise. Content is great, but there's something about a book that it's that legacy product that can be passed from hand to hand, from people to people is that give that keeps on giving. So on my second one, uh, purpose-driven entrepreneurship, I put together the framework for entrepreneurs to grow legacy company with those pillars that I mentioned before. And then my latest one is on purpose-driven leadership. So I'm focusing more on the systems and the team aspect of growing a company. It's almost they came through, you know, personal development first. And then the other one was growing a company that needed to create consistent income and also cash flow. And then the next phase is the scalability. So that's kind of how the book journey has mirrored a lot of my personal journey and the work that I'm doing out there in the world. Yeah, I love that. And, that, and that's a good analogy when you're talking about, you know, your path of growth, and how your books kind of align with where you were going and what you were teaching and how you were growing as well. So, and I'm sure that that's similar with some of the people that you teach where you can see where they're at and, and how they're growing in their, their careers or their businesses, and then how each book can help them along the way as well. Um, so the name of your brand is The Life School. What does that mean? And how did you kind of come up with the brand name that now is your company? Yeah, that came, uh, they came to me through a meditation, through a download is what they say, another voice, <laughs> intuitive voice that came through me and said, wait, entrepreneurship is just like life. And it's like school, you're always learning. There's no end to your learning and growth. And experience and skills are so valuable and you're always gaining new experience and skills <laughs> maybe a lot of those experiences and skills that we never learned in traditional school so that's how that came about and also the other piece is about how entrepreneurship is not an in like business it's not an area that we can just isolate because we are human beings first and we care about all the other areas of our lives to be able to be fulfilled and truly purpose-driven we should care about our health. We should care about relationships. We should care about um, what other area is there that people focus on, our spiritual health, our physical health, right? So I have more of this holistic view to life. And I find that business and life, especially when you're working on purpose and it's your mission, it's your calling, you can't tell anymore which is which. 
right? Which one's your life and which one's business because it's all one thing. So that's kind of how that came about. So I said, okay, so I think I, that that's it. Now I know, you know, what the mission behind the life school will be. Yeah. And I agree. Like people who try to um, say, this is me being business and this is me being personal, or this is my business budget and this is my personal budget or trying to separate the two. I feel like it's almost taking you as an individual and separating you into two pieces. And that just doesn't work. So integrating them both to make sure that your life is being successful as a whole, right? Instead of just kind of separating out of the two. So I really like how you integrated that together. That that that's a really good analogy too. Um, so talk about you know your clients that you work with now. How do you kind of walk them through the process so that you can help coach them to get to a better place? Yeah, and it's really focused around their area of growth and the journey of their business growth journey, I should say. And it's always the two things I've seen in patterns through helping startups all the way to bigger corporations is that it's really the two main problems that we encounter in business based on our phase and stage, which at the beginning levels of your business or the beginning years, this is not by years, this is where you focus your attention, is the inconsistent cash flow and income, right? So that's usually the main pain point there. And then the other piece, once you have that foundation, then of course is the scalability, right? Is that current business model you're operating under is gonna support your growth, how to move yourself beyond a lot of the things you're probably still doing, how to implement systems and team. So that's mostly what, what I do with when they wanna scale. Take a look at what they've built so far, keep what ha has been working and then streamline the process to the marketing and the sales aspect of scalability. When they're at the beginning, you know, beginning level, beginning startup um, journey is always the same. Clarify our market, clarify our messaging, clarify our business model. And now let's use all these marketing channels, which are organic or paid. And then I help people with kind of how to get um, people in their audiences all the way from when they first find out about you to be intentional about their customer journey, connecting all the different pieces, meaning content creation, your systems in the back end, your funnels, your workshops, your challenges, your all the different uh, things that you do for your brand and also for your authority and thought leadership so you can stand out in the marketplace. And then the biggest thing is always the articulation of that bigger vision, mission, the big problem you solve, the big result you're able to provide and for who. So through that personal journey and process, you know, I help meet them where they are, align them with their values, vision, mission, and then we get to work on implementation. Yeah, yeah that's good too. And so this is a podcast called Empower Her Money. So I wouldn't be doing the audience justice if we didn't touch on money a little bit. So you've had a corporate career, you have your own business, and you work with a lot of entrepreneurs. What are some either advice or mistakes that you see most often when it comes to money and entrepreneurs in their business? Yes, I love that question because uh, it's so interconnected, right? Uh, it's the profit piece and aligning that is really important. I say that the first one is misalignment between their goals, their lifestyle vision, and also their business model. That's always like I've seen this all, I see this all the time. The business model they usually choose because of our maybe, especially for women, if we're going to empower women with money, we have a lot of that, um, our prices. They don't always reflect the transformation. They're usually lower than, you mm -hmm. know, for the, uh, for the value that we're able to provide. So articulating that is the first piece and then aligning uh, those goals that they have for their business and their personal life, of course, because, you know, uh, like I said at the beginning, you can't sometimes separate the two, but it's good to separate the two because uh, <laughs> you need to be clear. And then, you know, it's the business model piece. That's one. The other one is the mindset shift. When you have a bigger vision and mission for what you're trying to build, is shift that mindset around not making a decision for tomorrow, but making a decision that's going to be connected to more of the, the long-term vision that you have for your business. So always think as like an investor. I'm investing in this because this is a skill or an experience or a tool or a team member that's going to help me align and meet the goals of the future that I have for the, my company. So that mindset shift around investing is another one. And then the other piece is, you know, the mindset piece, you know, what are some of those blocks that are coming into play? What is it they have implemented in their personal lives and where 
can they now invest that cash flow that their business produces as they scale their company so they can invest smart and really build an asset, not a company that is always relying on them. Yeah, I agree with you 100% on the mindset. Um, Tony Robbins has a term called inner civil war. And when you think about your personal and your business visions not being aligned, you know, I want to be financially free. I talk about that for my business. But then my personal side, I also kind of want to just go lay on the beach and do nothing. And obviously those two visions can coexist together, but finding that happy medium is really a mindset shift and and figuring out what does that look like for you. So I'm sure that you walk your clients through that process. It sounds like figuring out what is that vision for them? What do they want to accomplish? And how can you as their coach help accomplish those goals? Yes, I think the conflicts that we all have, and sometimes we don't know we have these conflicts, they're going to just stop you in your tracks and they're going to, you're going to make a step back and come back and self-sabotage. That's another piece that I personally worked with (laughs) on, you know, because I think most people, even though I think the fear of success is actually more paralyzing for people than fear of failure, because I think there's been enough education information out there for people to understand there is no such thing. It's always trying, testing, learning, growing. And if you value that and that's your personal value, then I don't think, you know, most people, uh, we've overcome that piece. Now it's the next piece. Like, okay, you know, when um, when I have the success that I'm looking for, how am I probably sabotaging a lot of that success? Um, so that the money piece so is, is connected with that because financial freedom is a very big, strong purpose and reason why most people go into entrepreneurship. So. Yeah. And being a coach, um, I would think that it can be difficult sometimes because as a coach, you can speak with a client that has hired you for you know your services and you've got this vision with them and you kind of give them the step by step or here's how we can execute to get to that next level. Is it tough sometimes being a coach when maybe perhaps you're more, I wouldn't say more excited, but you can see their vision and help them execute it and want it more for them, if that makes sense, than sometimes they're willing to do. Do you run into that sometimes as a coach? At the beginning, (laughs) I would do that because you have a lot of energy and maybe the experience is not there. So you're always like, I'm going to help the world and even people that are not even problem aware, solution aware. So you learn through that school of life and you 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 know you align yourself with the people that are really looking for you, and that's another piece. But yeah, I mean, I think that's just uh, you know based on the area that you've chosen to help people. For me, it's the business stuff, and it's like, oh, I could see that. Like that's your competitive edge. That's what makes you unique, you know. So I could see it on on the other end. But I think at the end of the day, I've learned to just um, as much as I want it for them to help them kind of see it for themselves. So be very intentional in my approach. So they articulate their own visions and what they want to do in life um, and then somehow connect what I see in them and also what they maybe want for themselves. So that it's 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 like always this partnership that's back and forth. It's not like, oh, my gosh, you should do this or that. But this is kind of how I see it. And, and this is the only way there isn't. There's a journey. There's many ways to get to the destination. There's many ways to get to a business. Uh, However, there are some processes and patterns and things that repeat, rinse and repeat. And then once you understand those and you get get the right skills and knowledge and expertise, then you can be very intentional about the way that you get to build a business that aligns with you. Um, So, yeah, to answer your question, I think that was more of a beginning (laughs) rookie mistake. But now it's just gotten wiser and just listen more and then kind of just jump in there. Yes, listen more. I'm sure that's good advice for anyone who's either in the coaching field or being coached. Listen more is definitely a skill that needs to be developed. Um, So AI seems to be a very hot topic. And I find that in many different industries, um, there's just so many apps and there's so, so much technology now that we can utilize in our business. Are there any AI technology that you're either using yourself or helping your clients use in their business? Yeah, um, I think just like anything, let's treat it like a tool. I know that, you know, it's bigger and everybody's kind of, you know, saying different types of information every day. It kind of moves with the speed of light. But, you know, just like anything, I've always been this person where it's like, if how can I use this to add value to what I, what I am already doing without losing the authenticity of my brand? Because I teach branding and I think at the end of the day, 
there's a million people doing the same thing. There's a million pieces of content that are maybe talking about the same topic we're talking about. But what differentiates us and we how we also learn is always from another human and somebody that we know, like, and trust. So I think it just becomes even more important that we add the human touch and the authentic piece to our companies. I use it like a tool. I use it for research. I use it for the, you know, the marketing pieces. I use it for the content creation without losing um, touch from my authentic voice of, of the brand and, and the mission and the vision that I have. So that's currently how I'm using it in the company. And a lot of the systems that I use, if things can be more efficient, I'm always open to understanding how to do that. But again, without ever compromising that bigger purpose of the human behind the things that we do. So that's kind of those are my thoughts around AI and it will continue to be here and rejecting it is never a good answer. We just got to harmonize with it. <laughs> that's the word. Uh, and just, you know, understand how to um, to align with it pretty much so that it doesn't take over and, you know, but, you know, new skills, we need new focuses. I think it's also going to change this industry that we're all in. At the end of the day, people want implementation. They want a process. They want steps to a predictable result. They want ROI. And they want the human touch for the accountability purposes and also for the support. So if you can find a way to add those components to your business model, then I think you're doing the right thing. Yeah, human connection is, some, is not something that we're going to be able to well, at least not right now, get through AI. So it'll be interesting to see that, you know, we can utilize a lot of tools to help us in our business, but I still want to talk to people and have human connection as well. Um, so for the life school, where do you see it maybe five years from now? Where do you, where would you love to take your company? Yeah, for me, it's the vision of expansion in other areas, not just the business piece. Um, cause the more I learn and grow and the more I become passionate about getting the right people around the vision and mission, it's really helping people with authentic alignment. Honestly, if I were to just take away all the words and everything else, authentic alignment, the more we understand how to do that, the more everything will be successful and we'll feel happy, fulfilled contribution, all the things we all want at the end of the day. So for me, it's always going deeper into the core of things. So that's kind of what I see in the future, the the scalability to be able to help people with that main piece, because once that's figured out, I think the rest can fall. fall. It's like the leaves of the tree. Once the trunk mm -hmm. is strong, you know, it's just like, OK, business, you know, career, health, like all those things are going to fall off now that they're not important. But if you, you know, I think that's our purpose in life anyway, to keep discovering. And we always go back the older we get. We try to like the the onions, the peeling of the onion, right? The more we peel every day about ourselves, the more we go into our spiritual side. So I think eventually that's going to be my work. <laughs> <laughs> so as a coach yourself, how, is it, how important is it for you, you to maintain and have coaches that help you along the way as well? Crucial. I believe in this industry. Um, I love this industry for the people that are in it for the right reasons, with their heart, with their purpose doing amazing work out there in the world. I understand how important it is to align myself with other people that are gifted in other areas. I think it's the leadership aspect, which I learned very early on in corporate. I should have mentioned that. That's another thing I learned about myself, which is really important and really aligning people and leveraging uh, everyone's gifts, natural, authentic gifts. Um, so that's kind of what I see. It's kind of that alignment and surrounding myself with people. That's why even in my community, I do a lot of events and I bring people together. I always say I connect dots in business and in people together because I really believe that um, through us uniting and collaborating, we absolutely could do more magic and create more momentum and impact um, in the world. So I think that's what it would be for me. Yeah. Impacting the world. Same, same mission, same mission, different industry. <laughs> um, so Alona, I have a fun question for you. If you could pick a superpower or a super talent what would it be and why? Mm. I love this question. For me, it would be awareness. I don't know if that's a talent yet, but how do I get access to heightened awareness around people, life, just connecting my own dots in my own journey? If I could, I mean, I'm always working on that, but that's just one superpower if I were to have it. 
I think it would just, I would see a lot of the, you know, a lot of the things that I probably don't see right now <laughs> through my limitations and through, you know, what we see around us. So just being able to see not the future, but more like the clear path around my individual journey so that I can use that, come back, serve myself and, and whoever else around me and then more people. That's what I would say. Hmm. Great answer. All right. So if our audience wants to get in touch with you, learn more about your coaching program or follow you on social media, how do they find you? Yeah, they can find me on my hub. I put a lot of resources together on my website. So lonaluparicoaching.com. And then from there, they can, wherever they live, they can follow me on uh, all the different social media platforms. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much for a great space and interview. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for tuning into Empower Her Money podcast. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to subscribe, share this podcast, and leave a review wherever you are tuning in.